Hello, and welcome to Sunday service. Please be seated if you aren't already. Now, we've talked about celebrities attending giant, questionable megachurches before, but today on this lovely Sunday, we're going to be talking about celebrities founding churches. If they can run a business, they can run a church, right? Well, that's a bit debatable, especially when it comes to no other family than the Kardashians. So hello and welcome to a very special episode of The Corporate Casket. Today, we're chatting about the religious nonprofits founded by the Kardashian family. And yes, there's more than one. But the question here today is, are these actual legitimate organizations or are they just tax havens? Well, let's take a look. Though before we begin, please be advised that this first portion of the episode will mention sexual assault. With that being said, let's get into it. Before there was a California community church, there was Hillsong. Each week, Hillsong's congregation was a who's who event with celebrities like Justin Bieber, Chris Pratt, and Kourtney Kardashian in attendance. The Hillsong United Band was even formed as a part of the church's youth ministry back in the late 90s. Yet beneath the cheerful atmosphere and emotional concert that took place on Sundays, Hillsong had a dark side. Their founder, Brian Houston, allegedly concealed sexual abuse that took place at his father's hands. His father, Frank Houston, headed the Assemblies of God Church in New Zealand, while Brian, before founding Hillsong, had been the head of their Australian branch. According to The Guardian, Frank was accused of sexually abusing nine boys, and one of his victims, Brett Stengshock, spoke out against Brian, questioning why he didn't act sooner. Brian knew about his father's actions, but as court documents show, he concealed the alleged indecent assault of a male from September 1st, 1999, all the way until November 9th, 2004. If you're wondering why he seemingly stopped hiding this information in 2004, that's because Frank died on November 8th of that same year without ever having been charged by authorities for his acts. Brian claims he's been open about all of this and sufficiently transparent. But when you don't go to the police on behalf of people being abused within your church, I beg to differ. Brian did step down earlier this year to fight the charges of concealment, but even if he is found guilty, that doesn't really change the fact that he's supposedly gotten away with this for decades. Not to mention, Brian says he didn't want to contact the police at the time because he would be preempting the victim and he believed it was up to the victim to decide how to proceed. Again, the argument doesn't hold much water when you account for the fact that one of the victims was only seven years old and Brian was aware of that. This isn't the only controversy Hillsong has found itself in though. In 2020, Pastor Carl Lentz was accused of having an affair with a woman by the name of Renine Karim. According to Kareem, Lentz never wore his wedding ring and that even when she learned he was married, she stayed in touch because she didn't wanna judge him. Lentz was fired once this was revealed. And as Houston explained, quote, the action has been taken following ongoing discussions in relation to leadership issues and breaches of trust, plus a recent revelation of moral failures. This moral failing led many within the church to question who they were looking up to. While affairs may happen and mistakes can be made and redeemed, for someone to be a godly man, this certainly wasn't a godly action. However, while this would be questionable enough, Carl was soon after accused of bullying, abuse of power, and sexual abuse. Though Carl has denied the allegations, they are incredibly damning. Leona Kimes, his former nanny and housekeeper, claims that Carl would touch her intimate areas without consent and repeatedly request she give him massages. When Carl's wife found out, Kimes was the one blamed and silenced before being ultimately fired. Kimes did blame herself at first too, stating, "'I would leave church on Sunday full of shame after hearing his sermon. I would think it was all my fault, only to get a flood of messages from him that afternoon.'" She considered talking to leaders, but Carl's wife allegedly dissuaded her from doing so, instead insisting that she be the one who repents. She remains on Hillsong staff to this day, even if she isn't working for Carl anymore. Unfortunately, Kimes isn't the only one that's made recent allegations of sexual assault. Anna Crenshaw, a student at the Hillsong College, stated that a staffer and the son of a human resources chief, Jason Mays, touched her inappropriately at a party. Mays was dismissed as a just young, drunk, stupid, and in a bad situation by none other than Brian Houston. And I find that really interesting because Brian seems to have a knack for dismissing sexual assault allegations. It's why I find it so unbelievable that he had no ill intent when he just ignored people's concerns around his father. This makes multiple instances between multiple people when he has not acted. 
So what would it take for him to actually care? I've got no idea. That wasn't foreshadowing for anything. He literally just won't take action. But you know, I don't know if I'd want to find out either. But that's not all. Kimes herself has actually come under fire for paying a former church volunteer just $150 a week for 25 hours of work for caring for her daughter, looking after her dog and cleaning. Other Hillsong members even have a name for this, the Hillsong Hangover. Apparently, volunteers can be so overworked that they become, in essence, nothing more than servants to the wealthy higher-ups. Hillsong also teaches the prosperity gospel, a troubling notion we've talked about in our megachurch episode, and it ties wealth to faithfulness. Basically, it's the more money that you give to a church, the better of a Christian you supposedly are. It's an absolutely bonkers like rhetoric and I don't understand it, but um, yeah, apparently some of your favorite celebs, like this is what they worship. Elliot Page has also called out the celebrity church for being anti-LGBTQ+, as Hillsong pastors have reached out about overcoming gay demons and praying the gay away. So I guess gay people in leadership positions in the church is unacceptable, unless of course you're Brian Houston's father and it's with a child. Good to know, but um, pretty disgusting. Between the homophobia, overworking volunteers, the affair, and all these sexual assaults, Hillsong no longer has a major presence in the US anymore. It still exists, but it's far from the popular music concert Sunday worship that it once was. So I know some of you must be asking, why did you even bring this up at all, Blair? Why does this matter? Hillsong isn't the California community church and their controversies happened long after the Kardashians church was formed. The reason I feel the need to summarize the many issues around Hillsong is because it shows the kinds of people the Kardashians surround themselves with and the kind of gospel they were interested in hearing. The prosperity gospel, leaders that aren't held accountable for their slimy actions, it's all going to be present in today's episode. And whether the Kardashians hated or were inspired by Hillsong, there's no doubt that these themes leaked into their own church too. When Kris Kardashian founded the California Community Church in 2008 or 2009, according to some sources, it was naturally a nonprofit that allows members to donate their money and get a tax break as a result. It supposedly swapped names between Life Change Community Church and the CCC we know it as today, but they are the same place for the record. Right off the bat, there's a few things that are kind of just off about the place. The main thing that everyone who discusses the church mentions is how they require a $1,000 monthly payment to be a member. In 2011, the church allegedly had about 300 regular members. So if this is true, that means the church would be getting around $300,000 per month. However, in one Google review six months ago, an owner of the CCC or someone with at least access to the review page denied this. Even so, enough people and sources have claimed this that it's actually largely seen as fact. But required four figure payments or not, this is far from the only thing that people question about the church, especially in terms of finances. Kim Kardashian reported that she tithed, giving 10% of her income to the church, in which case would be millions of dollars every year, lots of millions. And it definitely rubs me the wrong way that this supposed charity she's giving to is a church created by her mom, but a charity is a charity after all, right? So long as the CCC is doing good things, then who cares, right? Well. That's kind of the trouble. I can't actually tell if they're doing good things or what they do with their money at all for that matter. Under a portion of their website entitled What We Believe, they claim to value originality, creativity, and above all, honesty. They list their values about what it means to be God-centric and to be involved in a spiritual revolution, but there's nothing about where donations go. Their ministries seem like traditional weekly meetings. They have absolutely no events in the coming months, not at least as of writing this. And while they claim to have relationships with other local missions and nonprofits, there are zero examples or evidence given to substantiate that claim. As for all their money, the church allegedly didn't pay their taxes or wasn't paying taxes related to payroll expenses. We only know this because there was a $1,601 lien in unpaid taxes that was supposedly placed on the church for the period of October 1st, 2010 to June 30th, 2011. Shortly after this, they were also allegedly hit with a separate $2,012 filing, as well as interest and penalty fees. And for the record, it's so hard to find any financial information that this little piece that I did find doesn't come from the most reputable of sources. So feel free to take this with a grain of salt. But if this is true, then it's not hard to see why it could lead to so many questions and doubts about how they manage their money. Now, I do find it horrifically ironic that a church that claims to believe in honesty wouldn't, you know, show a shred of transparency around their finances. 
If Kim Kardashian was or still is tithing her income, then they are easily making millions and millions per year through her alone. As they have a relatively small leadership team and none of their programs look costly to run, I'd say it's reasonable to ask where all those millions are going. It's been speculated that this money goes right back to Kris Jenner's pocket. So in essence, the Kardashians are just keeping their wealth within the family and all while still having the benefit of a tax write-off. Again, for the record, I have no idea if this is true or not, and it would be dangerous for me to speculate further because, you know, the Kardashian-Jenner family is quite litigious. This could be just a bunch of sheer nonsense, just me being a little silly goose doing a little bit of a silly speculations. But if it's true, it would be really great of the church to actually clarify where their money goes to keep people from assuming the worst too. That's at least what I think would be the obvious thing to do, but it's apparently not. But I digress. After doing a bit of digging, I didn't really find any of their community events either. At least nothing where the CCC was doing any giving. For example, in May of this year, the church said they were taking donations for diapers and wipes, inviting their members to bring diapers to the church. This was part of their partnership with another organization, the Community Pregnancy Clinic. I scrolled through their Facebook endlessly to try and find other community drives and the most recent donation aside from the diaper drive seemed to be some care packages or I think love bags is what they were called. Anyway, these love bags or whatever, they were packing them for healthcare workers in September, 2021. Before that, they had another diaper drive in late April, 2021 in honor of upcoming Mother's Day. So in the past year-ish of time, they've asked the public for diapers twice and donated water bottles and snacks to healthcare workers. There might be more that they've done, but if this is the case, I haven't been able to find it, which again, for you know honesty and transparency, not looking so great. I'm not trying to diminish the good that they might have done. It's just that there's no way that they can't be doing more if the Kardashian family is actually supporting and donating to the church as they claim to be. So this leaves us with two options. The first is that the Kardashian family is not tithing to the church they founded and where they suggest tithing as a way to put God first in your life, which would be ridiculously hypocritical. Or option two is we still have no idea where the money actually goes. Truthfully, neither looks really good, but the questionable finances aren't the only page they took from the mega church book too. They also have questionable leadership. Please note that in this next section of the episode, we are going to briefly mention suicide. Thank you. Although Kris Jenner is known to be the founder of the CCC, another one of the founders and head pastor, Brad Johnson, is also listed on their website. Very little is actually said about Brad with the little blurb about him simply reading, prior to California Community Church, he served some of the fastest growing and largest congregations in the United States. These other congregations are obviously not listed, though the blurb adds that Brad had been at rock bottom before, and he believes that everyone can have a fresh start with God through Christ. As it turns out, while the CCC may not outwardly state what rock bottom actually is, articles have floated around detailing Brad's personal life and the controversies he's been involved in. According to the Acorn, he was a rising star in theological circles and the senior pastor of a 4,000 person congregation in Westlake Village before. Apparently in 2007, he cheated on his wife and irreparably damaged his reputation there. After the scandal, Brad said he had no intention of preaching again with the Guardian quoting him as stating, Regarding future ministry, uh, no, can't see it, not qualified. Brad claims that around this time, he attempted suicide three times. Twice he got into his car with plans to end his life. And the third time he overdosed on pills. Brad survived his attempts, sought out a psychologist and a friend gave him money to keep him from becoming homeless. He states that he truly picked himself back up again, seeking weekly counsel. My goal was just to heal and be a good Christian man, Brad said. He didn't intend on preaching again, but when Kris Jenner found him working in a Starbucks, he was convinced to go back to his calling and leading a church. Kris Jenner herself says that God was saying to her, go get him, go find him, in regards to seeking out Brad as a pastor. Now, Brad uses his experience as a teaching tool and as an example for his congregation. He admits that weekly services may look more like an AA meeting than a service, but many seem to respond well to this. Brad appears more human to them, more real and genuine because of what he's been through there's a level of trust there because of how Brad admits to his flaws. And I'm all for giving people second chances. And while I have seen some treat Brad's past as a way to discredit him, I don't believe that it should be. Brad clearly sought help and seems willing to learn from his mistakes. His past isn't my issue. He did say that he wasn't qualified to be a pastor and then he sought counsel for his problem. So I do question why that suddenly makes him qualified as a leader. 
But my biggest problem is, again, the general lack of transparency. Brad has the story he shares about becoming a new honest man, but no one in a leadership position is really coming out and assuring us where any of the money in this church goes. Whether or not you believe Brad is deserving of a leadership position, many question the second church that came out of the Kardashian family, one that drew even more criticism and raised even more eyebrows. Apparently, Kim Kardashian decided to follow in her mother's footsteps, and she, along with Kanye West, started a church called Sunday Service in 2019. This service looks to be, in essence, nothing more than a way for Kanye West to promote his gospel music. Apparently, the location changes from week to week, and these are more private musical events than actual church services. Kim is the unofficial head of communications for this pop-up church experience. The New Yorker described the whole Sunday service experience as a colorful concert, writing, choice members wear matching outfits, which look like the sweats that West makes for Yeezy, his high-end fashion line. Every week, they put on a new color, forming a pulsing block of white or black or periwinkle or pill yellow. And I feel like there's a line between a nonprofit religious service and a concert. I mean, when the literal head of the service is a musician and he's promoting his debut Christian music albums, I think there's a bit of a conflict of interest. Again, it feels like the Kardashians are just giving money to themselves, but because there's so much protection around churches releasing financial documents, we have absolutely no way of knowing for sure. But it gets better because everyone who attends the Sunday service has to sign a non-disclosure agreement. Despite plenty in the audience, and yes, I say audience instead of congregation, plenty of them sharing videos of the concerts on Instagram. Maybe you like Kanye's music. That's entirely subjective and up to you. But the idea of him leading a church rubbed quite a lot of people the wrong way, given his controversial statements about Christianity in the past. For example, he told an interviewer years ago that, quote, I don't wanna fucking be Christ-like. I want to be me-like. He also claimed to be on a mission from God to lead the free world. And as NBC stated, Kanye too preached the prosperity prosperity gospel. On The Late Night Show, he claimed, "'God is using me as a human being, "'as humbly as I can put it. "'He's using me to show off. "'Last year, I made 115 million "'and still ended up 35 million in debt. "'This year, I looked up "'and got 68 million returned to me "'on my tax returns. And people say, oh, don't talk about these numbers. No, people need to hear that someone's been put into debt by the system, talk about these kinds of numbers now that they're in service to Christ. According to Kanye, converting brought him millions and millions more. And receiving this money was literally an act of God. And if this were the case, then why aren't other Christians that donate to him receiving this money? Personally, I wonder if converting and starting the church isn't part of those millions, but you know, maybe I'm just being cynical. Truthfully, I have no problem with Kanye hosting private music at concerts every Sunday. But I do have a problem with him calling it a church and being able to host tax exempt services. But it's not just the questionable finances that caught my eye in the situation. Former employees and performers of Sunday service have filed a lawsuit claiming that Kanye West failed to pay them, provide meal and rest breaks, as well as overtime wages. One article in 2021 says that he faces about $30 million in damages from breaking employment laws as part of these performances. These lawsuits allege that Kanye should have classified these concert workers as employees, not independent contractors. Once again, there aren't that many reputable sources discussing this, which is pretty mind boggling to me considering just how many millions and millions are on the line. But from what I do understand, Kanye held these Sunday service concerts, managed to register as a nonprofit, promoted his fashion line and music at these events and charged people anywhere from 75 to $500 to get in. So, I mean, my obvious question here is how the hell is this a nonprofit? And again, for legal reasons, I won't say that the CCC and Sunday service are tax havens that put money in the Kardashians pockets, but I'm just gonna say that I personally don't believe that there's really no profit going on. But before we go on to talk about even more celebrity church issues and celebrity worship, let's take a quick moment to pay some actual bills for people who can't really make tax exempt churches and uh, have a word from today's sponsor. At the end of what can feel like an endless workday, the last thing I really wanna do is cook dinner. But when the fridge is empty, the urge to order in and skip all the cooking happens all too often. But thanks to Daily Harvest, I don't have that takeout temptation anymore. Daily Harvest keeps my freezer fully stocked with options that are delivered right to my door and are delicious, nourishing, and ready in minutes. And Daily Harvest has delicious options for all times of the day, breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks, and even dessert. 
and everything is on hand in your freezer and ready to enjoy when you need it. And Daily Harvest has a little bit of everything from harvest bowls, soups, flatbreads, snacks, smoothies, lattes, and more built on all organic fruits and vegetables. And I've got to be honest, you guys know, I love the smoothies. Absolutely been a fan for years now at this point. I can't believe I can say that, that's awesome. Uh, But I've gone back to being a little bit basic. And I, I say that because it's one of the first smoothies I ever tried from them, the strawberry peach smoothie. And I don't know, there's something about it that just hits different when, you know, the temperature starts to heat up and it feels a little summery. I'm like, ooh, this is my jam again. So back to strawberry peach smoothies we go almost every single morning. And new on the scene is their delicious harvest bakes for those moments when you're looking for homemade feels without any of the work. Simply put, they are ready to bake veggie packed dishes sizzling with gourmet level flavors that are big enough to share. You know, you just won't want to. So avoid the takeout temptation and get Daily Harvest. Go to dailyharvest.com slash casket and get up to $40 off your first box. That's dailyharvest.com slash casket for up to $40 off your first box. dailyharvest.com slash casket. Now, personally, and I think almost obviously at this point, I don't think celebrity churches in general are a good idea. Kanye West sampled a pastor's sermon without his permission to use on one of his tracks. He already thinks very highly of himself and doesn't really need this added celebrity worship. And we're only talking about his actions as it relates to religion today. Even if you absolutely adore the Kardashians themselves, their churches have not been transparent in their dealings. And if you're supposedly giving money to God and for God's cause, maybe you would want to know where that money goes? I know I would. Of course though, the Kardashians aren't alone in their celebrity church sphere. Mel Gibson allegedly spent $68 million on the Holy Family Chapel, a 17 acre compound not far from LA. His church was so alarming and controversial that the Cult Education Institute actually posted an article about it in 2007. They claimed that it followed an antiquated ideology of Catholicism and that women had a strict dress code. No pants were allowed, long skirts only, and they had to have veils on their heads. The article also claimed that the church had $37 million in its private coffers, up 10 million from the previous year. With Gibson as the CEO, I'd be curious if he'd ever gave himself a salary, like with Kim Kardashian as head of communications at Sunday service or Kris Jenner as a founder. And as a little disclaimer here, I'm not saying pastors shouldn't be paid. It's just that if these people really are Christian or godly as they claim, I'd like to hope that they would focus on putting as much as they can towards the needy while only paying themselves what they truly deserve or what they actually need to maintain the church. While I don't know how much Gibson or the Kardashians pay themselves, or if they even pay themselves at all for the record, it feels wrong that they could potentially earn a dime from a church they made as millionaires. Yet these celebrity evangelical churches have absolutely dominated Hollywood for some reason. The Cut explains that these stylish white evangelical pastors are leading a new religious organization in Hollywood, which looks cool and casual. In each of these churches, there is a heavy focus on baptism, tithing, most have convenient iPhone apps for this purpose, and the Bible. The CCC is no exception for this as well, because they too have an app that you can use to donate to their church. The pastors in these churches have a very feel-good attitude, very chill, and many care about followers and donations as much as they seem to care about their preaching. The rise of the cool Christian or these cool Christian churches is something that's been talked about a lot online in recent years. And while I'm all for people believing whatever they want if it doesn't hurt anyone, these large prosperity cool churches sure don't seem to be helping anyone. The churches we've discussed today seem more intent on making sure that they have as much money coming in as possible than doing any actual charity work. And look, I know this might be a slightly spicy take here, but I don't think just giving a church money makes you a good person. It feels like some of these celebrities just want to say that they're closer to God or a better person for donating to charity, but all they're really doing is just like giving a small portion of their money to a church within their community. A community that apparently is already very well off and probably doesn't need, you know, financial help from a church. If someone actually wants to be a better person and help others, then why do these churches preach a prosperity gospel? You can just buy your way into heaven or something. Now, I could be way off the mark here, but it just infuriates me that celebrities and pastors claim they want to help, but I don't see any help being given. Ultimately, you donate to whoever you wanna donate to. Personally, these kinds of feel good music concerts that have questionable finances just aren't it for me. Until I see them making real impactful change, I don't really consider them a nonprofit at all. But of course, these are just my opinions, my thoughts, collection of words wrapped up into one neat and tidy little episode. And that does bring us to the end of today's episode. 
I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something new here today. And if you did, make sure you're liking, following, and subscribing to stay up to date on all the latest episodes. I appreciate you spending your time here with me this afternoon. I know you could be doing a whole host of other things and yet you're here. So thank you so much. I hope you have a great rest of your day, evening, morning, wherever you are in the world, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.